All right, hello again. This is Jeff Scott, your instructor for the online version of 152, 157 website development, XHTML, CSS for the fall 2015 semester at Blackhawk Technical College. We're in the last chapter of the book right now, chapter 14, a brief look at JavaScript and jQuery. As you can see, taking a look here, again, our objectives, they're twofold. Introduce you to JavaScript and introduce you to one of the JavaScript libraries, probably the most famous library out there right now, which is known as jQuery. JavaScript, and I mentioned this in the earlier lecture, but I want to say it again. JavaScript is object-based, all right? Meaning <clears throat> that it has object-oriented capabilities it's up to you whether or not you want to use them. By and large, JavaScript is a client-serving, client-side serving scripting language. What that means is it's not a server-side language like PHP or Java Server Pages, JSP, or Active Service Pages, .NET, ASP.NET, or Ruby on Rails. All right? But some JavaScript is used on the server side. It's also an interpreted language. It's interpreted by the web browser. All right. <clears throat> You've got your choice when you write JavaScript. Actually, there's a lot of ways you can do it. And I'm going to show you what I showed the uh, 119 class that I have. And that is, first of all, if you want to, you can go into a product that's called jsbin.com. That's jsbin.com. And you notice we've got a few windows here. We've got a window that says HTML. We can open up another one that says CSS. Or I can close the HTML and the CSS. And I can just have a JavaScript window open here. So I can type in here, for example, alert. Hello, world. And I can tell it to run it right away. And boom, I get my hello world. Okay? I can do a prompt. Let's just remove that line for now. And I can do a prompt. In fact, I'll put it into something. I'll say var first name equal prompt. Please enter, not enter, boy oh boy. Please enter your first name. And I can even put a default value on it. So let's say that most of the people here, their first name is Nancy. <clears throat> and then I can say var last name equals and do another prompt and say please enter your last name and I can give that a default value too so let's say Nancy Jones all right then I can do another alert that says the name entered was first name plus blank space plus last name all right and I run this and you'll notice if I keep the defaults of Nancy and Jones it says the name entered was Nancy Jones if I run it again and put my own name in there first name Jeff last name Scott the name entered was Jeff Scott so one way I can do this all right, one way I can do this is to literally just use JSBin. Another thing that I can do is a few years ago there was an, an interactive tool that was made that's called uh, JavaScript Runner. And that is out at <clears throat> javascript.cs.lmu.edu slash runner. Yeah, let's see if I put that code in here and run it. 
Please enter your first name. Bill, last name, Gates. The name entered was Bill Gates. All right, so those are some ways that you can run it. Now, that said, that's not typically how you do it because that's kind of JavaScript standing on its own. All right, and normally what you want is you want JavaScript either in a web page or referenced by a web page. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to bring this up. And I've already done a bunch of examples, but I'm going to close them anyway. So let's close all this stuff. Create a simple web page. <clears throat> So doc type uh, HTML title no not title yet head title uh, example one did I keep that code yeah there it is good all right so I'm gonna put this right into my Java into my web page. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put in a script tag, which means that I'm about to use some scripting language, such as JavaScript, which is the best known, most popular scripting language there is. And then I'm going to say, I got to end my script tag, and my body tag, and my HTML tag, and I notice now I didn't have a beginning one. So I'm going to put that back up here right before my body. Not there, sorry, way up here, right after my doc type statement actually. So put my HTML tag in there. All right, so you can see what we have here. We've got just a very small HTML document. All right, I haven't saved it yet, but I'm going to. It has in it an H, a doc type tag, which doesn't have its required exclamation point. It has an HTML tag, a head tag. Inside the head is a title tag. And then we've got our body. Inside the body, we've put a script tag in there, beginning and ending. And we have the same code that we had in there before. So ideally, when I save and run this, so I've got to save it first. And this is like a hello type of page, so or the name, let's call it name, names.js. No. HTML. All right, names.html. And let's run it. Again, asks for a name, asks for a name, and then shows them both. So nothing big there. I think everybody can get that and understand that. So let's copy all of this code here. Let's open up a new window and paste it in. And we're going to grab out that the actual code that's within our script tags. We're going to put that in its own file, but we're going to put it into a function. We can call this function anything we want. So we could call it, for example, function say my name. All right. And then I'm going to paste that code back in and end. So again, that's that's say my name. So we'll call this. And this has to have an extension of .js. So say my name .js. All right. So there's whoops. You can't save here. So I didn't put it on the desktop. There. Now I've got it on the desktop. There we go. And I'll grab the other code that I had here before. And I want to change this script tag to source equals say my name dot js all right so there's begin my source there and end my source there now the problem with this right now is everything almost everything i need is there the only problem is there's nothing calling this function say my name there's nothing that's actually calling it so what we have to do is into our page here we have to put something like a button in so we'll do that. Input type equal button uh, value equal I don't want an exclamation or a double quote there. Value equals C 
say my name. We'll just say my name. That's just literal text. On click equals, now we will actually call the say my name function. All right, and we'll end our tag here. Okay, so let's see what that does. I'm going to save this. And I've got a save my name .js file, so now I'll have a save my name .html file. All right, so let's run that and see if we get the same exact output we got before. Nothing here until I click the button. Nancy Jones and Nancy Jones. All right. Again, there are uh, a boatload of examples in the book as well. Okay. All right. So, JavaScript is not Java. They give you a little bit of historical background there, and it's not that big a thing one way or the other. Some popular uses of JavaScript, starting on page 559. The first one there is the alert, and I've already shown you that when I showed the names. All right, it brings a little pop-up up. Pop-up windows. Be real leery of using pop-up windows, because a lot of people, as soon as they see pop-ups, they're leery as far as what they are and how to get rid of them, etc. And if you if you say I never seen a pop-up, you probably have. If you right mouse click, technically a little pop-up is coming up right there. Jump menus, all right, to allow you to go from one place to the other. Mouse movement techniques. So if I wanted to set something up, a lot of times with mouse movement, one of the, the here you go, here's an example with an image rollover or an image swap. So I take my mouse and you see that it's green, but if I, if I, the button here is green, if I put my mouse over it, it becomes purple. That's a mouse over and when it goes back to its regular color, that's a mouse out. Adding JavaScript to a page, that's what I just showed you. If you decide it's considered poor programming practice to do the example that I did here where you had all where you had your JavaScript embedded inside of your HTML that's considered poor programming practice because one of the things you should be trying to do is have a separation of content ideally your uh, your HTML will be in one file your CSS will be in another file and your JavaScript will be in a third file now you'll have a link statement to bring in your CSS and a script statement to bring in your JavaScript, but the actual stuff itself will not be that, that stuff itself will not be in the in your HTML file. But if for some reason you decide to do that, then you'll typically put your code in this like this, and you see it's got some weird stuff in there. It's commented out, and the reason that it's commented out is that old browsers sometimes aren't able to even understand what JavaScript is and sometimes people turn JavaScript off rather than showing the code on screen by putting it into HTML comments like that it comments it out not it doesn't mean it doesn't work but as far as the HTML is concerned all right it will not show it on screen so I showed you a prompt and I showed you an alert they have an example right here where they have an alert, welcome to my web page. All right, and there it is. All right. They talk a little bit about debugging here. And some errors are real easy to spot. Notice the word alert here. It's got two A's in it. Okay? But sometimes it's a lot harder to find it when you've got an error. So what you can do when you're working in JavaScript and you you want to so you've got a web page up so let's assume for a second this is my web page alright this is just a page from Blackboard but if I hit the F12 key what it does is it brings up in Firefox it brings up Firebug there's a name for it in Chrome also it looks pretty similar but I can now do an inspect where I can look through this stuff and over here I can see the exact HTML that was set up and the exact CSS that was set up etc and there even is there's a console here 
If I wanted to, I should be able to type in here, I believe. All right, if I wanted to do that, let's see. There is a way to do it. I, I, right now, it's just is kind of escaping me. But I can go through here, and I can start typing information, code in if I want to do that. So if I type in here, uh, console.log hello world. All right. Notice it comes up and it says hello world. All right. So I can type in stuff if I want to. Let's see if we put a few things in here. Var x equals 10. Var y equals 21. Var z equals x plus y. All right. I'm not sure I'm getting the undefined, but again, I just wanted to show you this. Alert. x which is should say 10 plus and then we actually want to put a plus sign in there plus y plus equals plus z and it comes up and it says oh there's a syntax error so oh it doesn't like the fact that I forgot my last let me grab all that stuff. I forgot the ending parentheses. Okay, so I'm going to take all that and try to put it in here again. And it still doesn't like something. Oh, now I lost the Z. All right, I'm just doing fine here. Plus Z. Notice what it says. I did an alert. 10 plus 21. It should have been equal 31, not plus 31. But you get the idea. All right, so I can put this same line in here again. Copy it. Let's close that. And let's come in and paste that line in here. But we'll have it hopefully this time be correct. Equal sign. And hit enter. 10 plus 21 equal 31. So I can even use this Firebug window to put in code if I want to do that. You hit the F12 key at the top of your page to turn it on, and F12 again to turn it off. And again, IE has a similar one also. All right. Another thing that the author does in here is she gives you a little overview of what's called the DOM, or the Document Object Model. And as you're reading this, as it says, JavaScript can manipulate the elements of an HTML document. All right. What happens when you create an, a document and you start to put a bunch of different stuff in it behind the scenes? And I thought I would show it here, but I, I don't know if it does or not. So let's go back a little. All right. So what JavaScript does in the background is it these are all objects basically and it starts to create and it says okay at the top of my hierarchy at the top of my document object model I've got HTML and HTML has two children it has a head child and it has a body child and the head child has two children it has a title child and a meta child the title has one child, and it's just some text. The body has what? It has an H1 child with some text in it, a script child with some stuff in it, an H3 child with some text in it, all right, etc. You get the idea. And I, when you start to put stuff in like this, you know, you and I look at it, and we get output that looks like this and it doesn't mean very much to us but what you start doing when you really work hard with the document object model is anything that's on that web page that you might want to change give it a different font give it a different color give it a different anything you start to give those individual things IDs when you give them IDs you're able to use a JavaScript property that's called get element by ID all right and so e I can get each individual element if I want to get all of the paragraphs, for example, 
then I can say get elements with an S on the end, get elements by tag name, and I can search for all P tags. So this starts to get really powerful, all right, when you start to work with the DOM, the document object model. JavaScript is an event handling language. As I mentioned in a previous lecture, what it does, JavaScript is kind of sitting there as your code is running, and it's waiting for you to put something in. Here are some of the events that it, that it is potentially waiting for. And there are a, a plethora of other ones. But as it says, we can use an event handler to indicate which event to target. So JavaScript is sitting there waiting, but just because you go and click a mouse, nothing will happen unless you put some code in to do something when that mouse is clicked. All right? So they've got to practice here. Let's take a look at what they have. In fact, let's grab this section of code that's right here. We'll copy it. Looks pretty ugly now. But we'll just grab the whole thing here. Copy. Click OK. Let's go back in here. Whoops, that's where I wanted to open. And let's open up another blank window. And we'll paste that code in. Okay? Now this is going to take just a minute or two just to fix this. Again, that word doc type really should have been in lowercase, not in uppercase. So let's change that. As long as we're trying to fix this up, let's make it look the way it really should. It's okay to put that tag into uppercase. It's just more conventional to put it into lowercase. Okay? All right. So I'm going to, like I said, I'm just going to try to clean this up. And I apologize. When I go from the book and I type stuff in, you can see what happens. there's a reason for doing this. I'm not trying to waste my time. I'm not trying to waste your time. But I want to show you that there is some code in here that actually does a mouse over and a mouse out event. Just so you can see the kind of things, or start to see, the kind of things that you can work on with this. And again, this is just an initial exposure. You know, it's not like you look at it and you go, oh my gosh, this is what you can do? Well, no, there's a lot more that you can do than what's just in here, but this can at least get you started. So again, as it says, this is a mouse over test. And there'll be another similar one that's in there. Whoops, see. Uh, again, this is pretty free format as far as how you set this up, but I'm trying to make stuff, put stuff together that kind of belongs together for lack of better words. So it looks like when we mouse over this, it's going to tell us basically we moused over it and when we mouse out, it'll tell us we moused out. Again, kind of a silly example, but it starts to show you that there are a lot of different things here for which, if you want to, you can add code. Hopefully I got all the blank spaces out of there that were in there, but we're going to find out very quickly once we do this. I'm just taking a quick look, and I don't see anything that looks wrong. And we'll call this one mouse.html. And we'll run it. All right. Well, there's a problem there, but see what happens? You moused over. You moused out. All right, I've got to fix that one HTML tag. But just so you can see, you moused over. Okay, so you can start to see some of the stuff. Quite often, when people do stuff like this, they have things that are like 
Oh, there's a blank space. That's why I got that error. All right. Um, they have a, a real good example that I've seen in the past, and I could look online and try to find it. But the idea is, yeah. But the idea is this: if you've ever seen this, um, I've seen ads already for different companies, like dietary companies, you know, for uh, uh, Jenny Craig and places like that that they'll have a, a man or a woman who's a little portly, they're a little overweight. And if you if you look at bring it up online and you mouse over their picture, they show how they became from fairly big to fairly small. And then when you mouse back out over it, that's an image rollover. Or sometimes maybe you've seen this when you take your mouse and you put it on an image and maybe it's a black and white image. So it's a, a black text with a white image. But when you mouse over it, it becomes a black background with white text. All right, those are just some of the things that you can do with this stuff. Again, I'm just giving you a, a little introduction of some stuff that you can do. So there was the mouse over and the mouse out test. A variable is basically that's something that you use in a program. It's a named memory location, and its value may change while the program is running. Now JavaScript is very liberal with the way that you name variables, but they are case sensitive. So if I make a variable that's called cost, lowercase c-o-s-t, and I make another one called cost with uppercase c-o-s-t, they're two different variables. The recommendation is always that you use lowercase. You can, it must start with a letter, but you can also have dollar signs and you can have uh, numbers in there, but you're best off just using letters. All right. These are two examples, or three examples here. Product code, this is called camel casing when you run the two letters, two words together like this. The first word is all lowercase, but every word you add onto it after that, you capitalize the first letter. Some people, rather than that, and it will take this too, use an underscore between them. Sometimes people just abbreviate. So you can do it almost any way you want. All right. So they've come in here and they've, they've given you a little JavaScript inside of your HTML, which again, as I mentioned, is not a good idea to do. That said, many people do it anyway. All right. And when you run this, it's just going to say, hello, Karen. So what did it do? It asked it said var username username equal Karen document dot write username. These two things could have been combined into one line. You could have said var username equal Karen. That would have been fine also. It would have worked exactly the same way. You can collect variables using a prompt statement. All right, they've got an example here. Username equals prompt. Please enter your name, and then they write it out. Okay. So they said, you know, right out, I guess it was on here, enter your name, you enter Jack, and then it would come back out and it would say hi Jack or something like that to you. Okay? All right, let me check my time here. All right, we're at almost 30 minutes, so I'm going to stop and pick it up here then in the next part of the lesson.